Welcome to USA Global TV and Radio, where our mission is to provide education, entertainment, hope, and inspiration. USA Global TV and Radio connects you with experts and audiences all around the world every single day to help you succeed in business and to live a richer life. Visit us at usaglobaltv.com to learn about career and life-changing training and mentoring programs like The Listening Mentor. Subscribe to our newsletter to stay informed about our special programs and offers. Discover how you can become a guest on one of our shows or a host or producer of a USA Global TV and radio show of your very own. That's USA Global TV and radio, where the doctor is always in. A very good day to wherever you are in the world. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us here at the British School of Excellence for this Train the Trainer Taster session. It's an opportunity for you to use the chat box. It is live. You can put in any questions you might have. I've got some incredible people in the studio joining me. And this evening is very much about you and understanding what we can potentially offer you and help you with. If there are any questions, as I said, please just put them in the live chat box. My name is Philip Sykes, and I represent the organization, which started back in roughly 2013, 2014, originally known as the British School of Etiquette. And in 2021, we decided to pivot the organization to the British School of Excellence. However, etiquette, manners, emotional intelligence, and how we show up every single day is still very much the bedrock of the organization. The organization is also very focused and fastidious about uh, accreditation and focusing on helping you become certified and accredited as an etiquette coach, an etiquette trainer, a life skills coach and trainer. So without further ado, I would like to take this opportunity to bring into the studio an incredible group of alumni that have had the opportunity and I've had the privilege to work with and meet uh, who've joined us over the many years that uh, we have been running and operating. So please, without further ado, if we could have everyone coming into the studio, that would be wonderful. There we go. So not in any particular order, but I'm going to start off with moving clockwise. We've got wonderful orchids all the way in Dubai. And thank you so much for joining us. We have Margarita all the way over in Athens, Greece. We've got Bruna on the lovely island of Malta. Uh, Bruna originally from, uh, from Brazil, but living in Malta for about the last 10 or 12 years, if I'm not mistaken. The lovely Sonia Moladina, who's here, based here in the UK, and has got an incredible etiquette and coaching business, focusing a lot on children and teenagers. Javed Bola, who's all the way over in Mauritius, the lovely island of Mauritius, who I've had the privilege of spending time with, as well as meeting Javed on the island. The lovely Hiba, all the way in Dubai. Uh, again, and wonderful to see you. And we have Bukola all the way from Nigeria. Uh, so a huge warm welcome to all of you amazing, amazing students and alumni of of the organization. Javid, you and I are the only gentlemen in the room. Uh, so we're surrounded by wonderful ladies. Uh, it, you know, we're the, we're the thorns amongst the gorgeous roses. And what I'd love to share with everybody, and, 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 and I'd love your take on this, uh, having gone through, you know, coaching and training uh, in, in, in many aspects of life, not just through the British School of Excellence, the beautiful thing about all of us is that we've got a huge amount of life experience behind us. And we've taken that and we've bolted on further coaching and training, not just through the British School of Excellence, but in many areas of our lives. I know all of you are lifelong learners. All of you take this very, very seriously. I know, for example, Margarita at the moment is taking on so many other coaches to guide her and steer. I know for a fact that Sonia is up-leveling and upskilling herself on a new EQ program. And I haven't had an opportunity to catch up with Orchids of Late or Hiba or Bruna or, or, or Bukola, but I just know that just for example, Sonia and Margarita have definitely started in, 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 in encompassing and incorporating further training and development. And I know since I lost Bruna, you've gone on further to do some further coaching and training and development. So with this in mind, you know, 
from where we stand as an organization, we are absolutely passionate, as you incredible alumni are, about developing and building and growing people. And as we all know, and I'd love everyone's take on this, there are some fundamental skill sets that we've always needed, we've always required as coaches and trainers, and we've always needed and required as human beings, that's for sure. And a recent statistics from the World Economic Forum came out talking about how fundamental these skills are going to be for the future of work and life. Now, why they're only waking up to this now, I'm not too sure, but they are obviously bringing into play the fourth industrial revolution. And we all know and understand how the, moves, the world has moved exceptionally fast. It's moved at a pace faster than I think anyone can actually believe it. There's some of us in the room that um, are, you know, in the 40s and 50 mark, I'm definitely in the 50 mark, We've seen this world speed up very, very fast in the last 20, 30 years. And yes, we are faced with an industrial revolution. We are, uh, you know, the, the, the economy, our digital world, the bots, the AI, all of these areas have just exploded. And we as human beings have become very attached uh, and have become very sort of absent-minded. We're, we're not mindful as, we're, as maybe we used to be. We're not as present as we used to be. We're very absorbed with technology and with this fast pace of life. And what the World Economic Forum was carry, uh, sharing was, you know, talking about creativity, talking about that EQ, talking about the importance of analytical and critical thinking, and going down the road of active learning with an incredible growth mindset, something we are absolutely fastidious about through our coaching and training is developing growth mindset mindsets in all of us, but predominantly in our children, giving them that amazing ability to develop this incredible growth mindset. We go into judgment and decision making, how important judgment and decision making are and going to continue to be, because no matter how brilliant AI and how brilliant uh, technology is, we at the end of the day as human beings really are that finite uh, area of, of, of sort of that human connection, that human touch of that final judgment and making those decisions. The fundamental aspects of our interpersonal communication skills that seems to have been lost along the way and 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 organizations and relationships are breaking down because our interpersonal co communication skills are not honed we're not polished in that area and this is an area that we all can really take on board and help and grow people in that particular area to give them that confidence to be able to communicate on a very dynamic finite level we talk about leadership skills and giving people the opportunity to grow and develop other people letting leaders come into play and actually funny enough um one of our alumni shared on the alumni platform recently about how fundamental uh, and and how key empathy is empathy they've now put out there that it's it's actually one of the strongest traits that any leader that anyone living their lives can actually incorporate into their lives and it is absolutely a fascinating read and if any of you would like to um be exposed to that particular article all you have to do is send us an email and we'll share that with you it was written in the forbes magazine we then talk about how important our diversity and cultural intelligence is the world's change and it's very very fast we need to be very aware of culture, language, race, age, gender, sexual orientation, political, religious beliefs, and so on. And we need to have that ability to accept change. The only one thing that they talked about out of those 10 points, and I've only given you nine, was technology skills. So this is really banging a very loud drum of the essence, the importance of what we as coaches have got at our fingertips. And as we know, coaching and development and training and helping other people right now has never been more prolific and more needed than, than than ever before so what i'd love to do is if any of you would like to sort of kick in on what i've just shared and, and give your views and input i'd really really appreciate that i don't want to sort of pinpoint anybody necessarily but i'm also very happy to do so so who would love to sort of elaborate and expand or share what you're doing with your current role or anything you would like to share where you are in life right now Sonia, I can see you smiling and come on over to you. Um, thank you, Philip. Now, I was just thinking, you know, how much I what you're saying resonates with me. And um, I've always had the belief that you can have fantastic technical skills 
um, you know, be academically, you know, have lots of initials and, you know, fancy title. But if you don't have social skills and emotional skills, um, it actually doesn't serve you very well in the workplace, you know, to to elevate your um, your place in the work, you know, in your profession and to be a polished professional. I think it, it, it requires so much more than just technical skills. So everything that you're saying is resonating um, and, and I think I'm also passionate about working with young people to actually start thinking about this from a young age um, as opposed to reaching adulthood and, and then reevaluating um, your position on that. So, yeah. Yeah, that is fantastic. Uh, would anyone like to pick up the reins from where Sonia sort of, uh, sort of took us into that sort of understanding of, of where she sees things and how important and fundamental things are? Orchids, would you like to? Yes. There we go. Please go ahead. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, I agree 100%. Um, the one that resonated um, for me, especially living here in Dubai, where it's a melting pot of all culture, is the diversity and cultural intelligence. I think, um, as it says here in the article, that our workplaces now is becoming more, um, more diverse and more open. And... Um, as an etiquette consultant or an etiquette coach, it's very, very important to raise awareness, um, especially that I am specializing in youth etiquette for anybody, for, for everyone to be more um, culturally accepting and welcoming in order for everyone to work harmoniously and to understand each other, to have a good collaboration, good teamwork. So, um, I agree 100% in this um, article that at this day and age, especially nowadays where a lot of people are mig migrating everywhere, what's happening in the world, people are moving places, you get to work with you know, different nationalities um, nowadays. It's so easy. You go to an office and you see 10 different nationalities working with you. So you have to be um, sensitive enough and um, yes, to be culturally accepting and welcoming of your colleagues, regardless of their background and their culture. That's all I want to say. Super. That is fantastic. And I love that. It is so important. It's so paramount and the world's a small place. And that's something that I've always made very clear about this organization and the ethos and philosophy behind this. The power of etiquette and manners is for everybody. It's not a classist thing. It is actually on the contrary, it's, it's going to help us open doors for ourselves and it's it's going to help us um, from stop banging into one another and this goes back to exactly what Sonia and Orchids are, are very much expanding on is that we need to show respect for one another and this is exactly there's one race and that's the human race and the sooner this world wakes up to that the sooner we're going to have a far more dynamic connection with one another we're going to have a, a far more wonderful world to live in because right now it's very fragmented it's very fragile and all of us together you know, one person can make a small difference, but can you imagine how all of us together can just keep banging this drum to make a massive difference in this world? And this is what this is all about. Is there anyone um, who would like to pick up off what we've been sharing thus far? Yes, please, Bukhari, go ahead. Lovely to see you all the way from Nigeria. Thanks, Philip. Um, okay, hi, everyone. Um, so I'll come from two points of view. Um, so after I finished the train the trainer program, I went on to start, I, I believe I discussed this with Philip, um, this outreach for the less privileged kids, um, especially with kids that are in um, um, public schools around Nigeria. So we did this outreach where we had to it was more like an inclusion program telling them that your background does not matter you can still have good manners regardless of where you come from and um it was really really interesting because um they picked off off um on how to work with people regardless of um, where they're from or the class or um their ethnicity or the likes and 
separately also it also helped them grow like um it helped them um increase their confidence so a lot of them became more confident in themselves and abilities to do more then um also coming from another background of human resources i've worked with different um, ethnicities different people um i worked with them um, expatriates as well so currently we have like this inclusion program in my workplace where we're working with different people from lebanese canada us uk and the likes and it's really really brought in this inclusion right where everyone is respected and i've seen um etiquette go a long way because in different situation i've i found myself training people especially in my organization on etiquette and good manners and just having a good business etiquette within the organization so this has really really helped the organization in so many ways on how to communicate with people from different backgrounds different um, um race and the like so it's 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 something that resonates with me especially in my field as a human resources um um personnel and as well as a an etiquette coach thanks philip super i love it thank you so much for sharing it's really wonderful and it's just so lovely to see you and have you here and i just so admire what you're doing as well with the with those young children because it is it's about giving them that confidence and really giving them that ability to find a platform that they can leverage off and really show the world that they are there to make a difference that they're there to go out there and, and really connect with human beings and just something i want to expand on that is uh, as, as as wonderful alumni of the organization you've heard me talk about hq hospitality intelligence and this is something that every single one of us have the ability to welcome people and have the ability to make people feel a certain way. Now that's a choice. We can either make someone feel really, uh, treat them badly and make them feel horrible, or we can really open up and share and make them feel amazing and wonderful. And people always remember that. You, 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 everyone's heard that wonderful phrase by Maya Angelou, people will forget what you said, they'll forget what you did, but they will never forget how you made them feel. And this is something that I really would like all of us, and I'm not talking I'm talking globally, all of us around the world, to really start understanding the power and importance of that. It is fundamental. Who would like to um, take take this, the, the, the spotlight next? Yes, please go ahead. Right, over to you. Yeah, talking about that, I think um, kindness is key to this empathy and kindness. And uh, the first thing I like to teach uh, the youngsters and even the, the corporate world the people is that uh, the first impression is important, yes, but it's the, the way they welcome people is most uh, important because people um, see your smile, see your eye contact, see everything. And if you're not kind enough to welcome them into your office, into your house, into whatever environment uh, you are welcoming uh, welcoming them it's it's very important uh, to to make um, the others feel uh, integrated and uh, welcomed because uh, if you are working uh, as uh, orchid uh, said uh, with multinational people for example and the difference of traditions are everywhere in all the companies international ones especially um it's um, you feel sometimes lonely because you are the only ex nationality and feeling welcome is key so kindness and um, empathy is very important and um, we should emphasize this very much in every course we give because in all situation you have to be kind and uh, hospitable as uh, possible if this is a word <laughs> So, uh, yeah, I, I think it's key, Philip. I just love that. It's just brilliant, beautiful. And as some of you know, we, we have this amazing mug, which we, when, when I see any of you, you will receive a mug. And it's a very simple white mug, but on there it says, in a world where you can be anything, be kind. And that is so fundamental. It is absolutely 100%. And I just love every single element that you have all shared thus far, because giving us this uh, amazing opportunity to, sh sh to share and show by example. We have to be the example. And this is not about turning 
on like a light switch and all of a sudden you have to behave. Or as I use the analogy, the puppet, where all of a sudden the puppet comes off the back of the door and it's got to start performing and then gets hung on the back of the door. This is about building and developing consistency into our lives and really showing up each and every single day. So again, something that we are absolutely fastidious about is working on mindset, giving people the tools to develop a strong mindset, even when you are finding that day challenging. And this is a key element. So where we stand and where we come from and where we put flesh on the bone as to not allowing your mood to dictate your manners and sharing tools on how to do that and giving you the a, a deeper sort of understanding how important that is and realizing that the head and the heart are so connected and whatever we do and however we show up, we are always, whether we like it or not, a shining example of who we should or who we are. So in other words, we are our brand. So that is something, again, thank you for bringing that to light about the kindness and that empathy. Who would like to take the rain next? Anyone want to jump in there off the back of what's been shared and said? And you don't have to follow the, the, the string of what we've been talking about. Anything you want to jump in and share or say, please feel free to do so. We lost Javit for a second. Now Javit's coming back. Margarita, would you like to share anything from your side? Please share your story, share something that you would love to bring to us. Um, I will tell you uh, something that happened last week. I was with my um, friend, she's an actress, and she's helping me with uh, speech lessons. So she told me, I don't understand, what are you doing? Uh, I find these etiquette things very old fashioned and I don't want to lose my freedom and things like this. I said, okay, I listened to that, uh, but I would like to train you. Give me just uh, one hour. At the end of the lesson, she becomes so fun. Uh, she's uh, so happy. She says, Margarita, I want to learn more. Uh, I feel free through these rules. Uh, I know now what uh, I have to do and how to represent myself and everything. And uh, we had amazing time and she realized that it's not something that makes you feel um, um, uh, stiff. You don't lose your creativity. Uh, on, the, on the contrary, you can... Of course, you, we cannot change the foundation of the rules, but every etiquette can uh, bring in uh, the presentation his own personality. Absolutely love that. Absolutely love that. And this is so wonderful because if you think about it, as I said earlier, etiquette and manners are there so we don't bang into each other. They're not there to harm us or to to sort of put us, uh, you know, to, to give us a speed wobble. They're there actually to build our confidence. And we all know when we're confident in doing something, you just get on with it. You're not worried about anything else. And actually, I'd love to just give an analogy. It's like dining etiquette. A lot of people say, oh, is this all about table manners and blah, blah, blah. It's absolutely got to do with table manners, 100%. Of course it does. But it doesn't necessarily mean table manners for Western style. It could be any form of table mannerism wherever you are in the world. But how are we conducting ourselves at that table? How are we showing up at that table? And it is, it's fundamental that let's use the Western style dining because it's possibly one of the most confusing is when you sit down and you face with all the shrapnel and you're looking and you go, oh, my hat. Whereas you know, the wonderful Asian cuisine is a pair of chopsticks and a beautiful ceramic spoon. That's for, okay, you've got to master the, the, the use of chopsticks. I understand that. But let's pretend or say you do know how to use chopsticks. But here we are with knives and forks and spoons and we're going, oh, my hat. What is this all about? Now, if you're feeling that way, you're going to be detracted. You're not going to be present. You're not going to be connecting with the person on your left or the person on your right or the per person sitting opposite you on any level because you're so concerned and worried about making a slip up or am I getting this right? Or, and you'll feel awkward and uncomfortable. And the amount of people that have given us the feedback of, wow, I'm so pleased I've done dining etiquette. I'm so pleased because when I went to that meeting, I could be totally present. I showed up. And I want to elaborate on that. Funny, interesting thing, Henry Ford, uh, his final throws in an interview was always around a lunch table or a dinner table at a restaurant that he enjoyed. And he would observe people from the moment they walked in the door. He would observe how they conducted themselves, how they treated 
the, the, the staff members, when they sat down, did they converse in great conversation? Were they good conversations? When, when, when they um, engaged with the waitering team, were they polite, were they friendly? And when they ordered their food and the food arrived, were they quick to throw salt on it or did they taste the food first? And this would all be monitored. And if they were throwing salt on their food without tasting it, that would be the final straw for, for Henry Ford and he would not employ them because for him, that was a bad decision maker. So please, ladies and gentlemen, there is so much power behind etiquette and manners and our emotional intelligence. Who would like to pick up off there? Anybody? Please, Javed, go ahead. Merci beaucoup. You're on mute, eh? Thank you. So basically, uh, for those who do not know me, I'm from the little island of Mauritius, and I run a um, consultancy firm for branding and communication and brand revitalization, which means I help aging companies and aging brands. Um, what I have learned and what I think is important is a bit more, less fairy tale um, so far. The, with the technology, industrial 4.0, AI, um, now you have chat GPT, um, there is so much danger uh, awaiting us all, which I think we are not really, we can't really pick up what's happening, what's coming up in front of us. Um, just a couple of uh, days ago, we, I was with a group of senior people and uh, we were discussing and they were showing, someone was showing us uh, how AI is being used now to train people on negotiation skills. I thought that was so scary because basically now it's not about two people we are uh, now in the process of getting people to have uh, role plays in terms of negotiation with robots. I think that is, is, is very, very scary. And this is where I think it is increasingly uh, becoming very important that we start polishing whatever skills, social skills that we have to differentiate ourselves from the robots that are coming ahead of us yeah that is actually frightening and and i love that word polish we we do ladies and gentlemen this is we've got, we've got to hone our skills it's about honing our skills and and therefore therefore passing this on to to our children and to our teenagers because if we don't do this the future is going to be very very frightening uh, and and again with as you just mentioned, the, uh, the, the, the that AI platform now, Jabba, I mean, you can ask it anything and it'll tell you how to do heart surgery, and that's a scary thing. And all of these aspects, what AI is, is, is sharing now, you know, it's it's frightening. You can ask it to write a talk for you. It, it's just petrifying. But what it's not doing is not giving us that polish and those quintessential tools that we need to connect with one another. And it is all about connection. But we also only would really like to connect with people who are hopefully like-minded people, people who show up, people who show respect, people who show consideration for one another, who are kind, who are empathetic, who really do know how to build and grow other people and develop other people and not living in a me, me, me world. And as a lot of us know, our youngsters today, they don't even know how to make eye contact. They don't know how to engage with you. They don't know how to follow through on, let's say, a commitment. These are scary aspects. There's this area of, of life that's very, very fragile. And it, maybe it's been for a, a, some time, but it's only going to start getting worse. So anybody else on the platform would like to please elaborate or expand on what I'm sharing. And if you've spoken already, please kick back in if you would like to. If I, if I may just add on, sorry. Please go ahead, Joe, and then I'll come. Just add on on whatever I said. Um, it, it's as far as as the the reports are coming in. There might be hundreds of jobs as we know them today that will disappear. 
um, accountants, for example, are you know, accountants, financial services, bankers, and they are not even talking about your supermarket cashiers that might disappear. And this is where I think this whole uh, thinking that we need to go back to the basics and technology is something that can help in terms of business. But at the same time, we need to understand that uh, technology on its, it cannot do everything on its own. There are still people, there are still humans, and all the other jobs that can be catered for uh, by technology, uh, there will be some jobs that will be taken care of by, uh, by technology, but there are other elements of social life that we need to, to stop uh, focusing on. Uh, at the end of the day, it's about people to people. And with a, a very, very complex world that we are living in where uh, people are going crazy and fighting with each other, I think the, um, the appropriate way to conduct ourselves uh, has become more than uh, more important than ever. I love that. Couldn't agree with you more. And it goes back to what we call relational capital. You know, people do business with people they like and trust. If you've got a good product or good service, that's a bonus. But it's all down to relationships. Orchids, you were going to share. Thank you. Yes. So I'm going to um, take away, uh, um, well, I want to discuss about one point here about creativity because we obviously, all of us here, um, your students, we just recently finished our train the trainer course. Now we got the skills, we got the knowledge. Now, how are we going to sell this? Um, it's obvious that we want to use these skills and knowledge, maybe to have, like for myself, um, I just set up my own business. So being creative because of the demand of like AI of the technology out there, how are you as an etiquette consultant or an etiquette coach be creative in order for you to provide these services to your customers? So I actually, this actually resonated to me, especially the past two weeks because I was so busy, you know, um, organizing my, my workshop and, um, I really need to think creatively how I'm going to provide this course, especially for adults, because adult learners can be very, you know, like judgmental because this is not the first time that they met someone who trained them. Maybe in their previous organization, they, you know, they met someone who's an excellent trainer. So you come there, you provide this training, you facilitate this training, and they already have a, you know, preconceived idea of how, you know, an amazing training or sort of a social or business etiquette training would, would look like. So it's actually a challenge for me, especially in the, the adult, um, adult workshop side, when I was trying to create how I'm going to provide this training for my adult learners. How am I going to make uh, my learners engage that they are with me 100%? And like with a youth etiquette, I find it's so easy because kids are so easy to please. You put on, you know, you add games, a little bit of prizes here and there, and they are so engaged. So, um, yeah, creativity. Again, um, I'm still stuck in the <laughs> adult workshop, how I'm going to um, lay this out in order for me to have a um, successful um session and um ways of working again you know i i need i have already inquiries from my friends um in the philippines if i provide zoom um session so again ways of working um how am i going to provide that and um yeah the, the use of technologies um i must admit i'm not really a very techy person so this is something that i need to learn and um, yeah, like acquire new skills, as you've said um, in point, um, yeah, point number nine and point number 10, embracing change. This is something that I have to acquire new skills, technology skills and embrace change of how these um, workshops or type of training will be done. 
yeah. I love that. I love that. And you know, from 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 me to you, is firstly we we have to understand who our audience is, and this is something as you know we we go into the dispersonality side of things with the coaching and training, getting to know the potential audience we're dealing with. How are they? Are they you know dominant? Are they more compliant? Are they more sort of right right brain? Are they more left brain? And and that there is 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 a really great uh, platform to start off on. Secondly, bring in those games. Bring in those icebreakers. I mean, adults, just like kids, love games. Make it fun, make it interactive, and make it very, very inspiring. But also give them the the um, the, 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 the ability to actually get them to understand why are they in that workshop. Because a lot of the time, kids often are sent to a workshop by parents or by school teachers, whereas adults have a, hopefully have a choice. I know HR might encourage a, B, C, D, E, F to go and do a particular course, which is understandable. But if you bring your A game, bring your fun and your energy into that room and you show them what the end result's going to be. So this is really key. If, if you share with them what you're going to be delivering and teaching and coaching them on, and it's not only about you, it's about them and you're going to get a lot of interaction from them and get them to do think tanks and throw questions at them and how they can better themselves and polish themselves. And it could be as simple as you know, getting people to um, hypothetically dress in clothing that they're not so comfortable in and how they show up that day at, at, at that workshop. And then you get a, a group of people dressing in, the, you know, to the hilt and, and how they show up and how more confident they come across and that sort of thing. And you start to share by example and bring in a lot of role play. And adults will take to this. If you give them the absolute benefits and you find what their pain points are, why aren't they getting that promotion? Why aren't they building that relationship with that department or with clients? Why is, and, and, and let me share something with you. So about two and a half years ago, we were very fortunate to engage with a very alternative type of broking firm. They broker whiskey and fine wine to people. In other words, um, investment, alternative investment. This group of, 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 of um, brokers, and with all due respect, not any of them really were from the so-called upper echelon of society or public schools. A lot of them had come from very ordinary. Some of them had come up from very uh, sort of challenging backgrounds. So they were definitely rough around the edges. And we made these classes, these coaching sessions, and this was on Zoom, by the way, to start off with. We made them so interactive and so uh, there was so much fun in, in it. We got them involved very early on and we gave them homework. We gave them tools to then go away with and we wanted results. And this organization, within three months, their margin went up 30%. And when we got feedback from, and I've got video testimonials from them, they said not only have their business worlds improved, but their whole life's improved. Their relationships with their wives, their children, has improved, improved exponentially. So there are so many ways, and I, and I love kitty cats, but there are many ways to skin a cat. And I don't know um, if there are any of you um, in, in, in the studio with me who would like to expand or elaborate on, on what I'm sharing. Please, uh, over to you, Hiba, please go ahead. Uh, it's a funny story. Uh, when I used to work at the Red Cross, uh, we had, uh, Red Cross is well known in the war zone. We had the armed forces delegate who always told me, uh, everything should be by the rule. Even war has rules. If you play correctly, uh, the war will not be as bad as we see it now. So that's always my opening when I start the session is that every game has a rule. If you want to succeed uh, in this game, you have to know the rule. And if you play it well, you will definitely get uh, to the point where you are the winner. So it's uh, it's following the rules correctly and easily and if everybody follow the same rule no one at all will be in a bad situation uh, not um, uh, comfortable in a, in a room full of people that you don't know it's uh, following a very simple rules be kind understand your audience, uh, know your homework, and everything will be following the same rules. If everyone does his homework and follow his rules, the game will be very easy and very nice and everybody will be a winner. So it's just the mindset to be positive in every circumstances and 
we will all win. That's all. I love that. It's how we show up as coaches. Absolutely. And all kids, just to go back to you, incredibly um, confident and you're also very polished. And, and I know how meticulous you are. You love to go tuck, 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 tuck. So I have no doubt. <laughs> I have no doubt going forward that you will be able to launch yourself into the, the adult arena. I, I know you obviously, and, and this is the whole thing is we start somewhere. We start if it's with children and teenagers and then we build ourselves up into other offerings. And this is the beautiful thing about the power of etiquette and manners and coaching in our capacity. And it, it's not a one trick sort of one, one size fits all. We have to adapt our, our skill sets. And please think broadly, because if you think etiquette and manners is all polished, and you know, yes, I've got to speak all politely, blah, blah, blah. It's got, as we all know, nothing to do with that. Uh, we can diversify into working with luxury brands. We can diversify into working with hospitality industries and sectors. We can diversify pretty much into any area of life because what we have at our fingertips are the tools, the knowledge, the confidence to go out there and give them that knowledge, give them that skill set. And that is the key to all of this. It really and truly is. Please, Javid, go ahead. Just like quickly to intervene, um, I understand many um, of our participants are handling or, not, or having sessions with kids, which is this is totally different for me. Um, I've started with adults and the most difficult adults being the lawyers. So I have started with lawyers and I can tell you it's it could be interpreted as a mistake, but I thought that was a, a very steep learning curve. And the obviously lawyers think they rule the world, they know everything and they can challenge everything. So it has been, at least for the first session, it was pretty, um, at least for the first hour, it was pretty challenging. But at the end of the day, something that um, resonates with everyone, with every adult, is that uh, you know, if we always do what we always did, we will always get what we always got. So there is no, if we keep doing the same thing all over again, this is, we're going to get the same results. And obviously, the, uh, even for lawyers, it's not only in the courtroom. And obviously, some people um, have told me even the, the way they present themselves in the, in the courtrooms now has changed. Um, the way they, they, they spend their time, are they going out for dinner with their clients? The relationship is now much stronger. So my, I'm just sharing my, my, my two cents of experience with orchids. Um, it, and as you rightly pointed out, uh, Philip, adults are big kids. <laughs> they, 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 they follow the same, the same rules. You just need to, um, take time to identify the right buttons. Oh, I love that. It's really important. And that's, you know, that's going back to what Heber mentioned, doing your homework. Over to you, Bruna. You've been very quiet in Malta. Yes, thank you, Philip. Yes, lately I have been quiet. So I would like to, to thanks for the, the, to be here with all of you. And I would like to add what our colleague was saying, because as he mentioned, most of uh, our friends and coaches here, they teach kids. And that is very important. I will, uh, how can I start it? I will assure you because sometimes the adults, they are so busy in their lives. They know that they need might, some help. They need some training, but they are constantly, you know, seeking for new things or trying to make or to catch up with their jobs. And, um, in that they try to do everything for their kids so which are the best so they will choose the best coach they will choose the best training they will choose the best uh, therapist the best doctor and sometimes they won't do this for the, for themselves as an adult so which is very curious and i can tell you because i experienced that so as a single parent living here i did this to my own kids and uh, funny enough, after my training, I developed some sessions to help me to grow up as a mom 
because I need to do that in a way or in another, not only as a professional background for my own kids and my own life and the future. And uh, I become all, an alternative therapist. And I noticed that sometimes you catch the parents by your own kids. So don't worry about to make some product so fancy for the adults because they will come. If you are already good, doing a good job and working in a great way with your kids. So everything starts from there, from the young age. They are our future. And uh, if we have struggles today, not just because of COVID times, but even now after the COVID, I think it's worse than during the COVID, to be honest. And uh, you are looking for the best. So if you see that difference and you see that it's reacting, you know, you have a reaction, you have good results in your kids. It's, you know, it's extending to you as well. I love that, Bruno. Thank you for sharing. That's really, really wonderful. Please, Sonia, go over to you, please. Thank you. Yeah, I was going to say, um, and just listening to what everybody's saying, I think there are some lessons in your etiquette coaching, Philip, that are sound simple, but are quite profound. And, and I feel that whether it's personal relationships or whether it's professional relationships, you know, something like don't let your mood control your manners, you know, whether we take, teach that to a six-year-old or a 60-year-old, you know, it, the age um, actually is irrelevant. It's just that, that notion that if you've had a bad day at work, if you've been stuck in traffic, you know, ground yourself, calm yourself down, take out a few seconds rather than going and imparting that bad mood onto your family and, and spreading that negativity. Um, or, you know, having a what can I do for you attitude, which I, you know, I remember you sort of talking about this quite a lot. Just, you know, asking, it could be a work colleague where you say, actually, how was that wedding you went to? How was your holiday in Dubai or whatever it might be? And I think people sometimes think that etiquette is an add on, but really it's core to, um, you know, relationship intelligence, interactional intelligence, you know, stakeholder management. Um, attracting clients, selling, negotiating. If you can't build rapport with people, um, then you wonder why your personal and professional relationships aren't quite, you know, working. So I think some of those simple lessons that you've shared have been profound for me in my life. And I, I know that the families that I work with, whether it's children or adults, it, it, it's really life changing if they're implemented. I love it, Sonia. And, and, you know, Sonia, you and I have had the privilege of a meeting in person, working together. We've met on numerous occasions. We've also had the privilege of, of being on various different chat shows and, and various things like that. And I've just seen you grow in everything you're doing from strength to strength. And I just love what you're doing. I really do. And, and as an organization, and I think you will absolutely hopefully, well, I know you will compliment this, is uh, as an organization, we are 150% behind making sure we can promote any of our alumni at any given point in time to back them up, to support them in whatever it might be. And that door is always open. And I think hopefully for those of you who've only just stepped through the door over the last couple of months, the door will continue to, 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 to stay open. It really and truly will. And this is something that I really want to, to, to sort of, I, th I think, capitalize on what, what Sonia is saying is we really don't go down a list of do's and don'ts in the organization. We, we really want people to understand the broad strokes of the whole journey. We bring in people who will give you skills on how to present yourself, on how to you show up every day on, on, on just understanding the, the, the choice of words we use each and every single day, how we as human beings can really hone ourselves and be that laser beam when it comes to the way we are connecting with one another. And at the end of the day, whether we like it or not, life is all about relationships. Life is all about relationships. And I've got a lovely little uh, book here, which I know a lot of the alumni have been exposed to, and I've shared a few of these little pages. But this little book would have been a pocket book. You can see how small it is. Uh, and this, I've actually got the inscription here in 1870 given to a Mr. Powell. And whether this is for ladies or gentlemen, this particular book was given to a gentleman. But it says, high birth and good breeding of the privileges of the few. But the habits and manners of a gentleman or a lady may be acquired by all. Nor is their acquirement attached with, 
attended with difficulty. Etiquette is not an art requiring the study of a lifetime. On the contrary, its principles are simple and their practical application involves only ordinary care, tact and sagacity. We all know a gentleman or a lady when we meet him or her, no matter in what garb or under what circumstances. We recognize him by a kind of instinct, since it is not easy to define in what the gentleman equality consists. And this book goes on. It's really, really wonderful. And I just love what everyone this evening, it's UK time evening, has, has, has had to share. I know we've, the clock is counting down on us rather rapidly. I know Dr. Jacklin, who's our wonderful producer, and USA Global TV is uh, one of, uh, we're, we're in partnership with Dr. Jacklin on a couple of shows. And as, as alumni and as students, you have the opportunity, and I'm going to say the privilege, of coming on to the platform of any of the shows that we are producing. We're going to be launching one, and I know, Sonia, I'm knocking on your door as soon as you can join the, the one about ch ch children learn what they live. That's going to be a new uh, production that Dr. Jacqueline and I have been working on. We've got the power of etiquette and manners at 3 p.m. UK time every Friday. The door is open for you to go out there and be on these shows and tell people about who you are, what you're doing. We are there to support you and, advo and be your advocates 150%. And Dr. Jacqueline, if you wouldn't mind just popping the uh, question up, that would be wonderful. Ah, that's interesting. Uh, Takeda, hello. Uh, actually, there's not a huge difference. I mean, it's how you present yourself. If you want to, if you've got years of experience as a consultant, you can call yourself, you can call yourself a, a, an expert consultant or an expert etiquette coach, because what you're doing is you're combining all your talent and all your uh, experience into, into an offering. And this is really something you can adapt to. You can be that chameleon. It's completely... Who is your audience? Who you who you broken who you broken yourself into is really important. So on the program we talk about coming up with your various different statements. You know, if someone asks you what you do and you say I'm an etiquette coach, oh, really who cares? But if you tell someone you build confidence and change people's lives, woo, what do you do? Hmm, I've been a consultant in X Y Z industry and I'm an etiquette expert and coach. Boom. Okay, so that is really a great question and I hope that answers that. Anyone else have anything they would like to share or say that's that's had, had the and, and I've got to thank all of you literally from the bottom of my heart for a giving up your time. I know orchids it's late in Dubai and Hebe it's late in Dubai. Um, because it's not too bad where you are, Jabbar, it's also late for you. Uh, and for the rest of us, well, Margarita, you're a few hours also ahead. But it really, really means the world to me that you've taken the time and effort to give up your free time to come on to the platform and, and share your journey, share your stories, share with people what you're doing with your lives. And it really means a, a, a huge amount. So I thank you all very, very much for that. Is there anything, anything that anyone else would like to share or add as, as we are sort of slowly coming to a close here? Yes, so I would like to share because um, earlier I just posted on my social media, both actually Instagram and Facebook about my, um, trial workshop um, with my uh, friend's kids. And then the comments that I have received on the platform, like now it's almost reaching to 200 about how it is actually needed nowadays to have this type of training. And everyone was like, you know, maybe jokingly, but half meant that, oh, can we enroll? And um, yeah, a lot of people emailing me from back home, like, can, can I enroll my 16 year old? I want, <laughs> I want my son to, you know, um, attend your course. And it's so overwhelming to know, like, you know, that these types of um, training or facilitation is actually in demand. That people don't realize it that it's it's such a, you know it's it's essential, especially for for youth nowadays, where you know they're always in their personal device. So this is what I'm going to share. And I'm so overwhelmed. I'm so happy that a lot of people are actually interested. Um, I've already had two um, enrollment as of tonight. So I'm really, really happy. Apologies if yeah, my voice is a little bit down because yeah, I was, I was not sleeping well because of setting up this um, etiquette business. 
but I must say that you know, it's very, very rewarding. And the feeling of being able to contribute and to see um, the children that you've trained grew and f- feeling very proud because the feedback that I received from my friends after the workshop were all positive. Um, kids are actually giving feedback to their dads <laughs> about the correct, you know, the um, posture and how to eat um, properly, how to use the cutlery. And they were just so proud of sharing the knowledge that they gained through my workshop. So, yes, I'm so happy that I've attended your Train the Trainer course, Philip, and I'll be forever grateful. And I'll make sure that whatever I've learned from your training, from my reading, from all my research, that I can, you know, share this information and knowledge to all my students. Oh, that just gives me, fills me with goosebumps and actually my, my, my eyes are welling up. It really is so incredible to hear that. And this is the most beautiful thing. It is rewarding. And I hope our producer will allow us just to go over by a minute or two. But this is one of the reasons, why, this is one of our whys. And, and I'm going to bring this just to, to the, 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 the speaker here. I'm so sorry it's taken me such a long time to get back in touch. I, I hope you're well, despite the fact I haven't been in touch recently. Um, but I just wanted to say thank you so, so much for all your help because I've just had back from Cambridge and I've got an offer from Queen's to study history there, which I'm over the moon about. I'm ecstatic. But the last few months have been chaos um, in the lead up to this. I'm so pleased it's all paid off. I know I wouldn't have had the poise or the confidence in my interview had it not been for my sessions with you. So I owe you an awful lot. So thank you very, very much. And yeah, I'm completely over the moon about it. Um, but also, kind of less importantly, but also quite importantly, my life over the last couple of months has been it's changed quite significantly and I've now got a social life which is surprising but I also know I wouldn't have been able to make the most of the opportunities in that regard that have come my way without your help either I wouldn't have been able to be myself as confidently as I have and I've now got so many more friends and so much more going on which I'm very very grateful for and thank you for being like giving me the confidence to make the most of that so I hope you and the family are well and that you so, ladies and gentlemen, this is our why, this is our purpose, this is why we go out there and do what we do. It is the most rewarding and outstanding industry to be in. I promise you that. I do it from the bottom of my heart. I'm not a Rockefeller. I'm not a multimillionaire. I'm doing this. Obviously, we need to make money, and we do make money, obviously. We've got to run our businesses. But this is something that you get out of bed every day to show up, and boom, you see how you change people's lives. And on that note, um, as an organization, we've just launched an incredible uh, opportunity for predominantly our alumni and any past students to come to London in June. There's a wonderful tour we're putting together. So if any of you are interested, just send us an email and Leanne will share the itinerary with you. And then Dr. Jacqueline and I have been working on a, 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 what we want to focus on in September, uh, and like a, a really strong uh, power hub. It's, it's going to be about the polished sort of person where we're going to be uh, holding a retreat for four or five days yet to be disclosed it'll be a lovely place that hopefully will be fairly easy to get to one day we're going to do it in, in, in mauritius for sure javid uh and we are going to build a, an amazing course structure it's going to be fun it's going to be interactive it's going to be exercise involved there's going to be um, think tanks involved there's going to be um, mind growth going on there's going to be an amazing amount of building and growing and developing um, to, toward the beginning part of September. So again, if any of you are interested, just send a, a registration information to the USA Global TV, uh, or you can send it to hello at the British School of Excellence.com. We would love to engage with you on that. And um, I just want to thank you all once again for, for making the time to the audience, for all the people watching and, and giving up their precious time to listen in on what I've had to share and what my wonderful guests have had to share. So thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you, Philip, for your time. All of you. Thank you. Thank you. uh, You know, we have the doors open. Please, I'd love to hear how you're getting on and if we can help you in any way. Please, please just share. Okay. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful rest of your evening wherever you are in the world. And... 
big hug from the British School of Excellence. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.